In the last video, we qualitatively studied the face portrait of the transcription translation model. In this video, we use eigenvector eigenvalue analysis to obtain equations describing the levels of messenger RNA and protein as functions of time. One can easily appreciate that most of the curves on this face portrait are literally curves. Most of the curves are not straight lines, they display curvature. However, some of the trajectories look very straight. In these cases, the dynamics look particularly simple and one-dimensional. We would like to describe the motion along these unbending trajectories. To do so, it is convenient to re-express the system of differential equations in terms of a coordinate system centered on the critical point. The variable delta m measures eastward distance from the critical point, and delta x measures northward distance from the same point. Delta m is defined as m minus its critical value beta m divided by alpha m. Differentiate both sides to notice that delta m and m have the same time derivative because delta m differs from m by a constant. Factoring out a minus alpha m in the differential equation for dm dt, highlighting dm dt in both these equations, and recognizing delta m in the parentheses, we write the time derivative of delta m in terms of delta m. The superfluous zero will make sense later. Delta x is a constant shift from x, so the time derivative of delta x is equal to dx dt. Connecting these equations by noticing that dx dt appears in both, and using these definitions to re-express m and x in terms of delta m and delta x, we obtain an equation for the time derivative of delta x in terms of delta m and delta x. We have moved the system of differential equations into the new coordinate system. The pair of differential equations is equivalent to this matrix equation. After a short time interval delta t, delta m is close to its original value but shifted approximately by the product of its time derivative and the duration delta t. An analogous statement can be made regarding delta x. The state of the system can be indicated by a pink arrow at time t. The change to the pink arrow over a short time interval delta t is described by this blue box and illustrated using a small blue arrow parallel to the field of quivers near the head of the pink arrow. The state of the system at time t plus delta t is the golden resultant of adding the pink and blue vectors. If the system had started out at these other locations indicated by these pink arrows, the corresponding changes to the system over the time interval delta t would have been, instead, these other blue arrows. Interestingly, this pair of blue arrows overlaps the corresponding pair of pink vectors, and this pair of blue arrows also overlaps the pink arrows to which they correspond. In these four examples, the blue arrows prescribe a change to the lengths, but not to the directions of the pink arrows. These are the special directions in the delta x delta m phase plane along which trajectories are particularly simple, meaning straight and unbending. In each of these cases, the pink vector and its associated blue vector are related by a scalar multiple. Each blue vector is simply a shortened version, also directionally reversed so there's a negative sign floating around, of its corresponding pink vector. Let's call the scalar multiple 1 over lambda delta t, because this way these delta t's cancel. We say that the vector of time derivatives is a scale factor lambda of the state vector. Using the equation at the northwest corner of the slide to substitute for the vector of time derivatives, we see we are describing eigenvectors. We attach minus lambdas to the elements on the main diagonal and form the product of off-diagonal elements to write an equation describing the eigenvalues, which are here minus alpha m and minus alpha. You can check that these are the components of the corresponding eigenvectors. The eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue minus alpha defines the direction of these pink arrows. 
Recall that when we list an eigenvector, we usually give an example with a particular length while thinking of a family of vectors pointing in the same direction but with a variety of lengths. Here is a shorter version of the vector b2 that is easy to fit within the margins of the illustrated phase plane. Other examples of scalings of vector b2 can point south or north with different lengths overlapping the vertical pink arrows. The eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue minus alpha m defines the direction of these slanted pink arrows. For the parameter values we've been using so far, this vector happens to have components 1, negative 1. This orange vector is 0 0.25 times b1. Adjusting the scale factor in front of b1 explores vectors including the two particular examples highlighted by the pink arrows. We can add the orange and blue eigenvectors to the phase portrait, so that when we sketch example trajectories we know we must avoid depicting curvature for the trajectories that approach the critical point along these special directions. This improves our ability to sketch phase portraits manually. Additionally, eigenvector eigenvalue analysis provides the analytic solution for the levels of messenger RNA and protein as functions of time, as we will now show. If we are traveling along one of the eigendirections, we change distance from the critical point without changing direction. We express this idea for the orange eigenvector by saying, at the northeastern corner of the screen, that the state vector is scaled by a time-varying factor s1 of t. The scale factor changes the length of the vector, but because s1 hits both components of the column vector, the relative proportions of these components to each other are constant, and the vector's direction is unchanged. We want to solve for the dynamics of the scale factor S1 using the matrix equation defining the system. We calculate the time derivative of delta M using the first row of the vector equation in which S1 appears. Because S1 simply multiplies a constant here that's 1, this gives d delta m dt equals d s1 dt. We use the bottom row of the vector equation to the right to obtain the time derivative of delta x. In this case, s1 is still multiplying a constant, this time not the number 1 but a fraction, beta over alpha minus alpha m. The constant passes through the derivative. Hitting the state vector with the matrix is like passing through the scale factor and hitting the eigenvector to tickle out a multiplicative factor of the eigenvalue minus alpha m. Put everything together. This stuff is the vector of time derivatives, as obtained by calculating the time derivatives of the individual rows of the equation at the northeast corner of the slide. This stuff is the action of the square matrix on the state vector. Since the equation at the top left says that the vector of time derivatives equals the result of hitting the state vector with the square matrix, the red and blue stuff in the bottom line are equal. The first component of this vector equation says, well actually both components say the same thing, that the time derivative of s1 equals minus alpha m s1. As we've discussed before, this means that S1 is an exponential decay in time, with some sort of constant scale factor out front. Substituting this explicit expression for S1 into the equation at the northeast corner of the screen, we describe motion along the orange direction as an exponential decay in length, with time coefficient equal to the eigenvalue minus alpha m. The length of the orange arrow decays without directional change. We can determine similarly that the blue eigenvector corresponds to an exponential decay. Describe the dynamics of the state vector as a scaling function, blue s2 of t. Calculate the time derivative of delta m, which in this case is zero. Calculate the time derivative of delta x. It equals ds2 dt.
Hitting the state vector is like passing through the scale factor and tickling out a multiplicative factor of the eigenvalue minus alpha from the eigenvector. Put it all together. The red stuff comes from direct calculations of time derivatives. The blue stuff comes from hitting the state vector with the matrix. The red and blue stuff are equal in the top equation, so they are equal in the bottom equation. The bottom row informs us that ds2 dt equals minus alpha s2. In this case, the top row, which reads 0 equals 0, is uninformative. Again, this says that the scale factor s2 decays exponentially. Substitute in front of the eigenvector with components 0, 1. The blue vertical eigenvector decays in length with a time coefficient in the exponent equal to the eigenvalue minus alpha. We can put the two eigenvectors together to obtain a general solution for the dynamics of the system. Consider the sum of the orange and blue solutions we obtained separately on the previous two slides. It turns out that this combination describes trajectories consistent with the matrix equation. Hitting this state vector with the square matrix is like hitting the eigenvectors individually and tickling out eigenvalues that go out in front as multiplicative factors. We want to calculate the time derivative of delta m directly by taking the derivative of the stuff in the top row of the combination of orange and blue stuff. The output is the top component of this vector. We also want to calculate the time derivative of delta x by taking the derivative of the stuff in the bottom row of the linear combination. We get this stuff down here. A time derivative acting on an exponential brings out a copy of the time coefficient from the exponent. Ignore the second term, it's zero. The time derivative downstairs brings out copies of the coefficients minus alpha m and minus alpha from their respective exponentials. We are talking about multiplicative factors. The red stuff comes from directly calculating time derivatives. Time derivatives tickle out coefficients from the exponents of exponential functions. The blue stuff comes from matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication tickles out eigenvalues from eigenvectors. You can check that the red and blue stuff are equal, confirming that the linear combination of orange and blue boxes at the northeastern corner of the screen is consistent with the prescription of the dynamics of the system in the first matrix equation at the northwest. Thus, the linear combination of orange and blue stuff is a solution to the system. Let's persuade ourselves that this is the general solution to the system. The eigenvectors provide a basis set, a coordinate grid for specifying any initial condition in the phase plane we'd like. At initial time t equals zero, the exponentials both equal unity. The weighting coefficient w2 in front of the blue eigenvector can be adjusted to obtain any of these blue vectors in the phase plane. For example, let's choose this one. The weighting coefficient w1 in front of the orange eigenvector can be adjusted to explore these orange arrows. The blue and orange arrow are vectorially added, corresponding to the addition of the stuff in the orange box and the stuff in the blue box. Adjusting the weighting coefficients w1 and w2 allows us to choose the head of the orange arrow to land anywhere in the face plane. For example, this particular pairing of this blue vector and this orange vector specifies the position marked by the red circle, which could serve as the initial state of the system. To draw the trajectory of the system passing through this initial state, we need to compare the eigenvalues. For the example parameter values, we have been using alpha m equals 2 and alpha equals 1. Blue alpha has a smaller magnitude, so the blue exponential decays less quickly than the orange exponential. The orange exponential will shrink to 50% of its original size earlier than the blue exponential will shrink to 50% of its original size. 
In this sense, we say that the orange arrow is shrunk quickly while the blue arrow still retains a lot of its original length. And then, after the orange arrow has become small, we see the blue arrow continue to shrink slowly. The trajectory seems to get pulled in along the slanted orange direction and then slowly sink downward in the vertical direction, which is why the trajectory is curved. For this trajectory in the phase plane, we can plot dynamics with time running toward the right, with the messenger RNA curve corresponding to these values of delta M and the protein curve corresponding to these values of delta X. Both variables asymptotically approach the steady state value 0, delta x equals 0, delta m equals 0, though the initial excess of messenger RNA allows the protein level temporarily to overshoot values it will later take. In this video, we used eigenvector eigenvalue analysis to study the transcription translation model. We initially sought the eigenvectors of the system because we wanted to identify unbending trajectories in the phase plane. This knowledge helps us more accurately draw qualitative phase portraits. It turned out that the eigenvectors and eigenvalues could also be used to write out vector equations describing the dynamics of the system even for bending trajectories. The eigenvectors and eigenvalues provide the general solution to the system.